The latest depiction of the Elephant Man, Joseph Merrick's troubled life in Victorian freak shows, will hit the small screen next year with Stranger Things star Charlie Heaton in the lead role. But the drama has come under fire from disability campaigners for not giving such a seminal role to a disabled actor. The casting controversy is just the latest in a long list. Questions have been raised about straight women in transgender roles, straight men playing gay men, and what ethnicity you have to have to portray a person of colour. Have we woken up to a particular kind of whitewashing that makes all our past casting choices seem antiquated? Or is identity politics making people forget that acting has always been about pretending to be someone else? Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what's happened to you? When Sorry. Daniel Day-Lewis played Sorry. a man living with cerebral palsy in the film My Left Foot, it was 1990 and it was lauded as an Oscar-winning performance. Your eyes. Eddie Redmayne also won the Oscar for his portrayal of a transgender woman in The Danish Girl. That was just two years ago. Today, it's debatable whether either would have been given those roles. The perception of which actors should be allowed to take on which characters has changed and it's making casting directors and their audiences ask profound questions about the role of the actor and the diversity of those who audition. The casting of actor Charlie Heaton as the Elephant Man is the latest in a summer of heated debate about the rights and wrongs of giving the role to an able-bodied man. Scarlett Johansson took on the role of a 1970s transgender massage parlour owner in the upcoming film Rub and Tug, until criticism that she was denying a trans actor the right to the role forced her to drop out. Disney cast a straight comedian, Jack Whitehall, as its first gay character. He's kept his role. Does the idea of a mixed-race woman blacking up make you wretch or applaud? Zoe Saldana did it in her role as Nina Simone. An Asian actor, Dev Patel, is shaking things up, taking on Dickens as David Copperfield. It was Glenn Close who defended Johansson and Hollywood with her observation that as actors, anyone should be able to play anyone. Do we still believe that? And is Hollywood ready to stand by that stance in the face of increasingly vocal activism. Well, joining us now, the actor Adam Pearson, who starred in the film Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson, and Tom Slater, the deputy editor of Spike. Nice to have you both here. And Adam, if I can start with you, uh, you would have you would have wanted to go for this role. In I, the I, 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 I don't just fancy an audition. Yeah. Um, oh, quite frankly, I think if you're looking for an actor. Um, around the same age as Joseph Merritt was when he died, with that kind of aesthetic, who's known to the BBC. I, I'm using, on paper, I should have at least gotten a phone call, and I think this is just another um, example of an able-bodied actor creeping up, who's probably going to win a BAFTA for this. I'm going to call it now, he'll get a BAFTA. And is your point uh, that, you, that it didn't even come to you or that you don't think an able-bodied actor could possibly act that role as well as you could have? Um, I don't think it's anything to do with, with Charlie Heaton. And I think it's just a case of disabled actors not getting a fair shot, at not just playing disabled roles, of playing any roles. And if a disabled actor can't get a look in at a, playing a disabled character, what chance do they have at getting anything else? And there are all these schemes, I'm sure we've all sat in diversity meetings <laughs> in, in this very building, where, where we run schemes and send them to spotlight the most inaccessible building in London right. to try and audition. But, but nothing comes of it. I think there's a target in, their, in the commission guidelines of 8% um, of on-screen portrayal being disability when they make up 20% of the population of all the disabled characters we see on screen, only 5% are actually for real disabled, and the rest of it and is just more creeping up. So, Tom, what do you think? Do you think this is lip service on the part of whoever it is that's doing the casting, or do you think that they think that there wouldn't be the audiences if Adam was in it? I mean, is that mm. the worry, or is it just a total lack of, of bravery? Or is... 
Well, I think uh, none of us were in the room when those casting decisions were made. And I think <clears throat> it's important not necessarily to impute the worst motives when people make these decisions. But I think in terms of this specific debate, as well as many of the others that in the film you nodded to, there seems to be two aspects to this, mm. one of which is the question of equal opportunity access. All of that is quite clear, particularly in relation to disabled roles. We're nowhere near where we need to be. But then this, there's this other part of the story, which is a lot of concern about representation, yeah. where you see a lot of discussion around, effectively, that only gay people should play gay roles, only yeah. straight people should play straight roles. So, and that, to me, is what is concerning, because that becomes limiting creatively, I think, and it's it, that piece of it. I wonder, if you, I wonder if you agree with Tom on that, Adam. You performed I, with Scarlett Johansson, yeah. and, and she was um, the one that was sort of forced to duck out of playing a transgender woman. Mm. Yeah, um, she, she's been part of, of two quite, quite big yeah. um, witch hunts. 2016, Ghost in the Shell, um, accused of whitewashing the same year that there were no black nominees at the Oscars, and again with with Robin Sutton. But I'm, I'm going to go with with Tom on this, and I don't I don't I'm, I don't want to go if we go too far the other way, kind of tokenism and positive discrimination and bad representation is equally as damaging as no representation whatsoever. And, I think and, and are we, we in danger of that now? Do you think? I mean. I think it's, it could head that way. I don't, mm. I don't think we're there yet, but I don't want to be the guy that stands and goes, only disabled people can play disabled yeah, yeah. roles, only black people can play black roles, mm. yada, yada, yada. Do, does, does, does gay straight, does that affect you in the same way? Would you, does, it, does it appall you to see a straight actor playing a gay role? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, to say it appalls me, I think the word appall is, is a bit of a stretch. I would like to see if they had other options that were closer mm. to the character. Because, and, and the argument I've been getting a lot, I, I tweeted, I was here, I, I've been on this debate for a few days on Twitter, and I think the argument, it's just acting, mate, mm. doesn't quite cut it. No, for I, think, me. I, I do think that's fair, but I also think the danger is that we are heading too far in that direction. I mean, because effectively we're having one of these scandals a week. You know, it was Jack Whitehall, then it was the case of Ruby Rose yeah, playing Batwoman in an upcoming one. TV show. The concern there was, despite the fact that Batwoman is a lesbian character and Ruby Rose is a lesbian, there was some discussion that she wasn't gay enough. That right. was some of the question. And I think we are in danger. I don't think we're there yet. I definitely think it would be alarmist to say that. But if previously our concern was about typecasting, about your background, your gender identity, whatever, defining what roles you can play, if we go down this road, we're going to end up with a kind of new PC form of typecasting, which I mean, could end up being just as limited. Because what you're, what you're then saying is it's about experiences, isn't it? It's your experience of, of being gay or your experience of being a person of colour. Mm -hmm. But you could attribute other things in mm. that, whether your experience of being, I don't know, an anorexic woman mm. means that you'd have to have an anorexic playing yeah. every role like that. I, I don't know. Do you think we are in danger now of, of throwing out, as it were, the baby in the bathwater in, in terms of what acting's become? Well, yeah, I mean, and for example, if, say, um, the craze film, um, we didn't go out and cast for murderers and gangsters. It wasn't like a <laughs> casting call in a prison to kind of, to kind of nail that. And I've got no doubt that, that Charlie is going to nail it. But I think as, as actors, you kind of bring your baggage to the table. Yeah. Mm. I think everyone has that kind of that inner darkness, that inner self that they can tap into. And um, Charlie Heaton has no idea what it's like to be disabled or have a disfigurement. Doesn't mean he can't mm. play at it. But it's that, it's that extra layer mm. that is missing. Mm. Oh, I, th I think that's a fair point. But I think it's also the nature of acting is the fact that you draw on your own experiences. might not be exactly the same, but it's a kind of humanistic enterprise in that sense. You're relating to someone very unlike yourself. And I am worried that we're losing a bit of that in this discussion. Thank you both very much. Thanks for coming in.